Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and uh, I don't know how I did it, but I, I really left out a, a very cool way that, that uh, Tesla can keep from cutting margins next year, even as they sell out cars. Uh, this one is worldwide. This will apply everywhere. Um, it's a very cool one. Um, but just really quick before I get to that, um, could I just take one minute to suggest you buy a copy of the Elon Musk mission. Um, there's so much content in there, like the content in these videos, but we can go deeper. We can be more complete. You have more time to kind of sit and think it through and, and evaluate it. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from a lot of you with regard to what you think on Twitter, or I even include my email in the book. So um, anyway, pick up a copy. We'd really appreciate it. So let's get back into this. Uh, we've had a whole list. You can go back and look at a lot of videos this last week of ways that that Tesla can um, uh, provide additional demand for their vehicles in 2023 without cutting the margins. In some cases, it involves uh, reducing co uh, reducing the, the sticker price, but not reducing the margins. And and uh, there's obviously going to be uh, a lot of places this year where costs are coming down, cost of raw materials. Uh, Elon has already mentioned that, that raw material costs are coming down, better manufacturing capacity and capabilities in, in the plants that will allow them to keep the margins and yet uh, reduce sticker prices. But this is one that kind of is a, an unusual one, okay? Elon mentioned this the other day. He says, you know, one of the problems with the Fed raising the interest rates all the time is every time the Fed raises the interest rates, it raises the price of the car. Well, it doesn't raise the price of the car, but it does ra raise the total cost of the car. And the cost of the car, of course, is the for most of us, it's what do I got to put out monthly? What, what, am I, what, what is my loan cost or what is my lease cost? What is my monthly cost? That's how I'm making a decision about buying the car. Not so much about the sticker or the IRA reductions or anything else. It's what is the monthly? So if you're sitting there and you're and you're thinking I need to get a car and you know I would you know I, I think I could handle seven eight hundred dollars a month, and all of a sudden you 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 look at the amount that it's going to cost on a six year loan and it's a thousand ten and you're like whoops that just seems like too much. Well, there's ways to solve that and. This is not rocket science. I'm not making up something really exciting and new. Uh, car retailers, car dealers have been doing this forever. You open the car section uh, on your, you look it up on the internet, or if you still get a newspaper, you you take a look and it says $195 a month for the lease, or you know $99 a month. I don't know if they have any of those anymore, <laughs> but but uh, there's all these offers that have to do with the lease. Well, the lease or the loan is not merely a function of the price you pay and the number of months that you pay. There's two other factors with regard to loans and leases. One of those is, does the company either keep their own paper? In other words, are they the ones financing the car? And or if they're using a company, they're using two or three companies to handle the paper, are they paying down the interest rate? So those are two possibilities. And the third thing is, is how many months are you taking to pay for the car or how many months um, are you leasing the car for? Because the longer the lease and the law are the longer the uh, loan payment, then the less per month you pay. Uh, that's, I guess that would be obvious, right? So of course that means you pay more interest, uh, but that at least allows you to have a lower monthly payment. So one of my arguments is gonna be that because cars last for 20 years, and certainly Teslas are going to last for 20 years, uh, and because they hold their value, typical six-year loan doesn't have to be the standard anymore. It could be a seven-year loan, even an eight-year loan. Well, that seven-year loan is going to make a difference of about $100 a month on your payment, depending on which car. The other thing that can happen is that the company, Tesla, can either pay down some of the interest costs, so let's say that right now it might be a 7% interest cost on a, on a car loan, a new car loan. And let's say that Tesla says, no, we'll, we'll pay it down to 3%. Now I did some math and the math works out to where um, that's gonna make, well, let's just see if I can go through the math with you. <laughs> okay, really quick here. All right. Um, 
a $50,000 Model 3. I know there's no $50,000 Model 3. We're just going to use $50,000 uh, for ease. With a $5,000 tax in California, unfortunately, $4,500, it depends on what county you're in. The $5,000 tax in California and a six-year loan at 7% is $767 a month. You take that same car with a 3% loan and seven years, it's only $594. So you can see that makes a really big difference in your mental attitude about what's going on. Now, the cost to Tesla to pay down this loan would be about $5,000 depending on the deal, it's probably less than 5,000 and they may be able to cut a deal with the company uh, to make it you know, less than the full $5,000. Or they could self-fund and they have a 3% annual income coming in from this car for the next seven years. So those are a couple of different ways and you can see how dramatic the savings are. You can do the same thing on the lease. I don't know whether Tesla's, I, 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 it seems like maybe they are holding some of their own paper on leases because I know they want the car back at the end of the lease. I'm just not 100% sure of that. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below if you know whether Tesla is keeping their own paper on the, lease, on the leases or not. Well, on the lease, you have another trick you can play. And that, that trick is how much do you think the car will be worth at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the lease period? So you can raise that amount. And if you're holding your own paper, you get to choose. There's no rules that are going to determine what you choose as the amount that you think the car will be worth at the end. You obviously don't want to be in a negative asset situation as a company at the end of that lease. But if you're going to take it back, you get to pick what you think the value will be at the end. And that would allow you also to lower the monthly lease price. So I did go on um, uh, yesterday and look at a Model 3. And it turned out that the, the lowest cost Model 3 Right now, they're offering a lease on the uh, Tesla website, and I believe it was $497. Uh, now you take off the $7,500, you take off any savings that Tesla wants to pass along on the battery and the battery pack from the IRA. Um, you have all of these opportunities to lower the sticker price, and maybe it's you have a $495, maybe you have a $449. So there's all kinds of possibilities here uh, of, of how things could go with regard to leases, with regard to loans. Um, and this would be another way to attract a large number of people next year without necessarily lowering the profit margin or lowering it as much as you would, as you would in order to get that same person to make a decision. If you've liked the content, please like it. If you would like some more like this, please subscribe so that you can be notified. And um, it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.